Thank you for clicking play. PK Comic 411 issue 11. I'm going to start with DC this time. I only have three. I don't know why. It's just only three. But uh, after that, I want to do a little show and tell and then get back into the other Marvel and, and Vertigo, etc. Um, we're going to start with Justice League of America number 13. Because the first thing I thought of was is Martian Manhunter dead? Or does he stay dead? Right? So then, you try to stop time, you're reading through, and you start rolling your eyes like it just seemed too easy. It was just too easy. Rush to the conclusion, and then there's a glorious twist, which I loved. So, good job, Matt Kent. Um, there's also a retcon um, to Argus, which I like. So that's Justice League of America, and remember, For Able is coming to an end. We have Batman Superman, with Jay Lee back doing the art. And this is a continuation of Batman Superman number 8. Goes to the world's finest number 20, and then it goes back to Batman Superman number 9. Um, it's just not the same with, um, without Jay Lee's art. And I love Power Girl, right? But uh, here we go. World's finest number 20. And they use uh, Kryptonite Necklace. You know, that's pretty much the biggest thing that happens in that one. Lastly, in DC, we have Aquaman. And I got to tell you, I have stopped... Uh, getting the Aquaman hardcovers now because, sorry, Jeff Parker sort of ruined it. Jeff Johns had it, Paul Pelletier I was doing awesome uh, pencils and inking, but uh, yeah, Jeff Parker. Ruined it for me. Throne of Atlantis was great. Uh, it's so very ho-hum, you know. So what are they going to do? They're going to make another Aquaman title. Aquaman and the others is coming back. So that's DC. Let's get to a little show and tell, though. This is uh, <clears throat> going to be funny, I hope. On the YCC Facebook community, someone asked the question, have you ever read an X-rated comic that wasn't really rated X-rated? So everyone put in their two cents, and one person put this. So I actually got, I get these for my niece, actually. Um, this is volume three, and I never really read them. And I'm reading them, I'm not, uh, X-rated was still a joke, but uh, this is pretty, pretty funky stuff. It's uh, a little wacky. All right. I uh, just came back from the Gamma Trade Show. Game Manufacturers Association 2014. I will be uploading pictures of the booth. If you ever want to see a really, really cool booth. It was our third consecutive year. we got to sort of nail down. Um, if you're interested in playing games, card games, or tabletop games, remember that. Powerthegame.com. You can find us on BoardGameGeek and Facebook as well. Power the Game. Ba boom Yes. I spent a good wad on this, and with the struggle of single issues versus trades versus hardcovers, um, basically wanted this, so if I ever went back to it, I wouldn't have to go to all the different, you know, whether it's New Adventures or Adventures or Infinity, I'd have it all together, and it's going to look nice right there, right? So, um, the first thing I can tell you about this is that, you know, in the small print, you have infin Infinity 1 through 6 and New Avengers 7 through 12. First thing I realized is, like, the Avengers part of it, even from number 4, when AIM has the cocoon, it's just not in here. It's just, you know, it's big enough already, right? Um, so, yeah, strike 1, strike 2, price. Strike 3, um, it doesn't tell you what you're reading. Like, it, it does say inf Infinity 1 through 6, but it doesn't go 1 through 6. Like, what's the chronological order? And it doesn't tell you. It just doesn't say this is New Avengers and then this is Avengers or this is Infinity. Um, I can't stand that. And that's props to Valiant that does it so very well that they actually tell you what's on the back. And right here you have the numbers of what it is. And inside it'll give you all of the separate writers, colors, etc. for each one that's in here. As well as every front cover that you would see in a single issue. So, that's how you do it, people. So, moving on to actual, let's go to trades. And I just gave Matt Kent props. Here's Matt Kent doing Unity 1 through 4. And uh, Greg Pack is another writer that comes from the DCs and the Marvels. And he's doing Eternal Warrior. Now, the Venditti, the Van Lentz, and the Joshua Dysart are, that's, that's Valiant. Like, they're, they're the core writers of Valiant. Matt Kent does a good job. It's not great. It's a good job. Um, and when I'm starting to read this, I see Eternal Warrior with 
um, you know, a cast, if you will, sort of space age cast. And so then I went into Exo Manowar Volume 4, and I'm flipping through it, and this is Robert Venditti, like I said. And it's, the art isn't as wonderful, but it's just better storytelling. It's, it's just true. Um, I, I would say Matt Kent is accessible to more audiences, but uh, Venditti does, just does a better way of telling a more adult storyline. And then we have James Asmus, Insecurity. Another thing I want to point out is these titles for each trade are wonderful. Uh, Exo Manowar Volume 4 is Homecoming, and then for Unity it's To Kill a King, and then <coughs> Quantum and Woody Volume 2 is Insecurity. Insecurity, but Insecurity. You know, good play on words, right? So this is Volume 2, and it has uh, issues 5 through 8. First read, um, actually the first couple of uh, issues, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm not into this as much. But then I just stopped, took my time, read it, and saw the Easter eggs, reveals, riddles, and humor that Quantum and Woody gives. Uh, the series is impossible not to love. That's right, impossible, says IGN. Um, Newsarama, 9 out of 10. Ming Doyle's artwork is stunning. So all of these wonderful accolades, whether they're paying for it or not, who knows? Five stars, it's that good, says Comics Bulletin. Um... The funniest series on the stands, The Weekly Crisis. And Comic Book Resources says, superbly entertaining, fun, funny, and action-packed. And that's actually what they do very well in this, Quantum and Woody. Um, they have a good piecing of action, storytelling, backstory, and then humor. And Quantum and Woody is definitely the valiant sort of slapstick humor side of it. Um, with the goat, etc. All right, so that was a little bit of show and tell. I, th I think I have another one. Oh, yeah, Volume 3 came out. And the one thing that I'm really interested in uh, Saga Volume 3 is is the pacing. Um, there was a couple of issues. I was like, I don't know if that's filler or just to get us back into it, but nothing really happened. So I'm going to give this a, a good read. This is the only one that I haven't, well, I read the singles, but I haven't read through this like all the rest of the stuff that you see. All right, I am going to move into the other category and I'll leave the best for last. Though I do love Coffin Hill. This is now number six. Um, I'm, and, and I was fearing what the climax would be in terms of, you know, there's the haunt in the forest. I mean, what could it actually be? Well, here it is. It's revealed and they actually have what the villain will look like. It's very well done and if you add naked chicks in a forest, it's just going to be that much creepier, <laughs> right? And that's what you see in number six. You know, and they didn't have eyes, I think. Yeah, they're like glazed over eyes. Very, that's Coffin Hill for you, man. I don't know if it's goth, crazy, horror, whatever, but it's just uh, exciting to read. God is Dead, now is bi-weekly. Costa is writing bi-weekly. It's now a, a, stor a story founded by or something created by Jonathan Hickman. And uh, yes, Jonathan Hickman's God is Dead. There's two stories going on now. There's, there's sex and death, um, and now they're starting to intertwine, and then the main storyline. Um, and here, not that it's a spoiler, but if you want to see Hephaestus slash Vulcan kill Heimdall, right? It's just, that's what's wonderful about God is Dead, is that they're mixing all of the different mythos. Um, and I do believe that Death was wearing a Breaking Bad t-shirt in here, which is pretty great, is it not? <laughs> Manifest Destiny, number what? five. And uh, long-standing question I want to put, when did they meet Sakajawea? I know in the last one she's like jumping in, but they keep on referring as if they already met her. And I've read all the issues. When did they actually meet? If anyone could tell me that, that would be wonderful. When did they first meet Sakajawea? So Lewis Clark Expedition, right? You got plant zombies going on. You got min minotaurs or min bull bulletors because they're not buffalo. Right? Something like that. Um, so... You're starting to see what everyone's raving about on this. The art is just crisp and detailed and colorful with a very fast-paced dialogue. I'm starting to get into it just as much as everyone else. I was sort of a naysayer in the beginning. East of West still delivers. Uh, this is Jonathan Hickman again. Yes, Jonathan Hickman in Image, whereas Jonathan Hickman in God is Dead, I believe, is Avatar. Yes. So a different publisher here. Owner created. Is that That's what Image is about. Uh, and Death almost finds his son. Nope. 
Got to wait till next issue, maybe. Uh, but the judge, jury, sheriff, goggle guy comes back, and that is a wonderful reintroduction of that character. Uh, I, forgot, I forgot who hired him, though. Um, I know it was uh, in a great issue. The art is stark, and that is the best thing about East of West. And I think a lot of people are trying to imitate that now, but this is the mainstay, and that's Dragoda. Um, Scott Snyder, in his image publication, The Wake, 10 part miniseries. This is now 6 of 10. Ah, 7 of 10. And uh, it's the second new story arc. It's way in the future. And I love that. That the first five were about one thing. And the six through ten is about another. Um, so he's having uh, two different yet connected arcs. And that should be applauded in the, in the ten part miniseries. Um, however, Dash the Dolphin. I, I don't remember how she knows Dash. It may have been in issue six. Um, that's the benefit of TPBs. But uh, surprise ending in this. And uh, that's, that's the wake. Strongly recommend that. Now for the last two and the other publications, our top three of all of these that you see, okay? Rush, gotta love them, the band, Neil Peart, Clockwork Angels, is the name of the album released in 2012. I'm gonna have to memorize it as I read this. This is one of six, and I didn't have any Boom Studios after um, Deathmatch, Paul Jenkins, was done. So this is my Boom Studios uh, representative here. Um, and I don't know if Neil Peart reads comics or not, but this is a great adventure story, and the art complements that. It's almost like an ink wash um, pastel, almost. Um, but what an adventure. It's, it's just a groom finds utopia disheartening. Let's go. Let's travel. You know, it reminds me very much like uh, Uma McGregor in Big Fish. That type of storytelling. Um, wonderful art assist story. And all is not well for those that read it. Now, I always like to keep track of quotes. And there is a wonderful quote in this particular one. It says, are you ready? A single person in a perfect world is little more than an identical grain of sand or a tiny pebble alongside the road. You with me? Yet if a grain of sand got into the eye or a sharp pebble lodged in a shoe, it could cause tremendous problems. This could be very interesting. I like that. That goes into my quote catalog. Like, scars are the wounds of the story and the real definition of Carpe Diem that's in Blackest Night by Jeff Johns. Those are sort of my quote list that I'm keeping. Last, definitely not least, I'd almost say this is my number one comic of this haul is by, guess what, Joshua Dysart. Bleeding Monk. My God, I'm about to give this to them uh, for my Master of Kung Fu to read. It's that good. It's A+. Plus. Even if it's your very first Valiant that you read and you don't have any backstory, I strongly rep recommend this. Um, and if you know the Valiant Universe, what a great reveal of how the Bleeding Monk came to be and why he continually bleeds. Um, the Ancient Origin Revealed. Valiant number zero, and it's part of the Harbinger you know, line of comics. Strongly recommend that, people. Now we're getting into Marvel. It's quite a stack. Um, I pulled out the last four Uncanny Avengers because I don't know what Rick Remender is doing. I had to go back and just, what? So, we have 15 here, okay? It's a good quote. Havoc's talking about Lagavulin. Um, 16 years, which is my favorite. Talks about in and out Great Burger, California. Gotta love it. GTA, oh, in my good graces. Grand Theft Auto. Um, Captain America still hearing impaired from the blast, and I, that still makes me laugh out loud, and even continues it, even though Havoc knows. It, it's just that part is a little side thing, but that's extremely funny. But here it is. This is this is a 15. Then you go to 16. You have a lot of good fights here between Thor and Captain America, and Scarlet Witch continues to be dead. Then... Dude, Captain America is dead, is dead. This is supposed to be the flagship. This is, Rick Remender has gone off the charts here because right here, and I'm gonna tell you right now, the earth is destroyed. You wanna see how the earth is destroyed? You pick this up because now they go into a number one jump off point. And it's like, earth is gone. 
how can, that's why I went back. I was like, Earth is gone. What's, what's happening? So I went back so I could read issue 18 dot now, jumping on point, and the mutants are on the ark. Uh, some time has passed, and Magneto's old, got a great beard, etc. And, and, and Havoc and Janet the Wasp, are, they're, they love each other, and they're trying to basically rewrite the history and stop the Tachyon Dam so they can go back in time and save everything. Um, and, well, they try to do that. The Beast says, ah, oh, well, it was a thought, and then, no, they can't. Well, here you go. Who is the time traveler? Who's the one that started it all? Read this and figure it out. No spoilers. Now I'm going to go through a couple of number one starting off points, and this one is 23 dot now from Iron Man, and Kiri and Jillian has always been on my bad side since the whole Arno brother thing. It's just scur to me, and um, well, the first thing that he goes into as Tony Stark talking, he goes, "Well, you know how I found out that I was adopted." And Arnold, his brother, is in like an iron lung. Well, this story has nothing to do with that. It's like, yes, someone's been listening <laughs> as if they're reading, watching my vlogs, right? But st absolutely, he got the, the, the message. We don't want to hear about that anymore. Let Arnold take care of that city, Mandarin City, whatever, but move on. And it's a great crossover. They brought in a lot of magic. So this is magic versus tech going on here in the 23 dot now. Let's talk about the Mandarin rings, okay? And it starts off with, are you sitting comfortably? Then I shall begin. And it's a story of old. And I love that part. And I would like to stop and say, get a nice place for you to read comics. I'm sure all of you out there do. But any noodlers that just began, like I did a year ago, find a place that is your place. You got your boards and your bags. And you got your, um, hopefully you have your carrying cases like this. Strongly recommend the BCW carrying cases really do recommend those have one in your car for when you pick them up on Wednesdays new comic book day uh, and I also strongly recommend natural light if best get home early from work get some natural light on the comics all right so um, I just love that and uh, Iron Man may be on a good read now maybe and then he'll ruin it 17 issues in like he did last time issue 17 Iron Man that's the one I can't stand all right now we got another jumping on point Uncanny X-Men number 19. Bendis does make a good starting point. Uh, the cover's wrong. Can't stand it when they have erroneous pictures of something that happens that doesn't happen. And P.S., you know, Doctor Strange, man, he is not to be seen, dude. He locked himself in a room with some crazy book, and all of a sudden Doctor Strange gets involved in this? What is that? Does Bendis even know the implications of what he did in here? It's great action, great angles, good comic, good starting off point. Captain Marvel. Don't know too much about Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers here. But uh, let's see, Kelly Sue DeConnick, Matt Fraction's wife. Oh, I keep on forgetting. Coffin Hill writer has one of the best names ever, right? Besides, we're like Rags Morales. Um, Caitlin Kittridge. So you have Caitlin Kittredge, and then you have Kelly Sue DeConnick. Very cool names. Just want to throw that in there. Um, so it's not pretty deadly. Uh, but not much else, actually. She decides to go to space. Um, there's a retcon to the Builders and an Infinity crossover, but uh, I don't know. And I think it's a miniseries, too. It says number one here, but I think it's out of ten or out of eight. Not too sure. Um, Daredevil, number one gratuitous San Francisco stuff. I live in San Francisco, or, or near San Francisco. Gratuitous, like talking about names and landmarks. It's, it's Gratuitous is the word. It's sort of silly. Um, I have never read a Daredevil, and I can't stop thinking of Ben Affleck. I know you feel sorry for me now. Um, and now he's going to be Batman or something like that. I feel sorry for all of us now. <laughs> um, but uh, it's the first one. Uh, the art's not great. Uh, well, I keep reading it probably because of San Francisco, yes, but how big is that base of readers? Um, before a jumping on point for New Avengers, we do have New Avengers number 15, and I got to tell you, I, I don't know if it's filler or a bridge. It's just them watching other universes and d different things that are happening in other universes. This Bianchi or Bianchi pencils and ink work, very, very striking. Good me pause, a couple odd ones, like, mm, that doesn't look right. Um, and who in the hell is the Dingra? Because they take his green blood and breathe fire and stuff it's it's very obscure this one um i think it's like right before the dot now they just sort of threw it in there and have it be flavor pretty much that's it's not filler it's not a bridge it's just some flavor so then we go to the jumping off point which is 
Now, and I go, whoa, 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 what? The nod to DC is almost laughable, okay? They even said justice and made it an acronym, J-U-S-T-I-C-E. And then they even said it was like a great society. Well, that's Justice Society of America. It's stunning how obvious it is. Um, yeah, Doctor Strange, see, cover, not involved, definitely not involved, mentioned, not involved. So you got like this green guy, jo Jorvis or whatever, obviously Martian Manhunter. You have a female Flash that looks like the Golden Age Flash with the helmet. Um, Dr. Fate, undeniably, it's just silver, even has the onk. Uh, you have a sun god by the name of Sorvan or something like that, very much like Kal-El. Um, what else do we have? Uh, some guy that I guess would be, he almost looks like Dr. Doom, but it would be Batman. And his name is Wayne. Literally, his name is Wayne. First name, I would figure. Um, and let's see. It was nice to see Hickman sort of write for DC, I guess. And we got to watch this world. And this is the world that they've been saving, like the Justice... I mean, they're not bashing it by any means. They're actually saying they're the best heroes that are saving the day. I don't know. I don't know what to think of that. Moving on. Avengers World slowly becoming my favorite, just sort of quick read, and has all the other guys that we've seen in Infinity and stuff. Um, they're adding magic to the fray now, obviously. There's a big, big baddie at the end. Um, though, not sure where this starts from um, Avengers World number one. I mean, it's the way that it just pops into number four is like, wait a minute, did they tell him to go there? Sort of weird. Again, TPP would solve that. Um, but Starman takes a little journey to his past. Mighty Avengers, hey, if you've been watching my vlogs, you know that I'm happy that Blue Marvel is finally involved. Phew! Um, and because I do not see race, creed, or color, I am comfortable in saying this is sort of black. I mean, you have African American, you have Luke Cage, Power Man, Adam Brashear, Blue Marvel, and Spectrum. Yeah, um, She Hulk's green. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know if anyone's picked that up. I don't know whether it's bad or good. I, I dig Spectrum and Blue Marvel is slowly becoming my favorite. I wish he could show a little bit more of his powers. Anyway, um, Thanos level security and Adam Brashear's underwater thing and a white tiger breaks out. Those be big words. Nova Unchained. Why is it Unchained? Is that another nod to Superman Unchained? I don't know. I'm loving the Beta Ray Bill thing here. It's just great fun. Action packed. He's like the Peter Parker that we don't have because of Superior Spider-Man. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um... It's just fun seeing the kid, you know, sort of jibe him, try to figure out what he's doing. Um, all right, he gets to school, saves the dog. Amazing X-Men, another just great, fun one. It concludes the first arc, and everyone lives, right? Right? Uh, it's still fun and easy read. It's, it's, it's just refreshing. And uh, I finally figured out what was different about Firestar. And I know they changed their costume a little bit and made her all ripped and whatnot. But it was just like, that's not the Firestar I remember. Even the glasses, like, I sort of remember. But what's the difference? She has a ponytail. That's the only difference. She has a ponytail. Somehow it's totally different than a ponytail. Let's go to Avengers. Avengers 27. Confusion for this kid. Um, and the first thing was like, oh, man, this is thick. Wow. Uh, you know, this is going to be a, a good read. But no, it's this little thing down here of all new invaders, which I already own. Number one. Why do they do that? It makes me like I just wasted the money on that one. Why would I do that? That's I'm not I'm not a fan of this. Are you? Who would? Unless you knew it was coming out and you didn't buy the other comic, right? All right. So it's very much like DC Forever Evil. You got the sort of doppelgangers that are... Evil, you Thor versus Thor, etc. Captain America versus Captain America. I mean, he, actually, he's General General Rogers, right? Um, yeah, same playbook. I'm sorry. Um, just like Thomas Wayne in Earth Two, and I think Thomas Wayne Jr. in Owl Man in Forever Evil from Earth Three. They're doing the same things now. I mean, as do they know they're doing that? They would have to, but unless they're just not reading DC and just have like. They're all thinking the same thing at the same time. That shit happens, man. Uh, Superman, Goblin Nation, part three, number 29. Remember, this thing is coming to a close, and it's getting heated. Really enjoying the conclusion of all of this. Um, the art is new and fantastic. Um, I think they're, like, sort of doing CGI shadows and stuff. So this is really, really good. This is part three, 
And what I did not know is that this comes in between part three and part four. So before you read third, you make sure that you read this, if you're going to read it at all, because I think it's superfluous is the only word I can think of. Or it's, it's not even filler. It's, it's, it connects. I just, you don't really need to do that. It doesn't need to exist, I think, is what I'm trying to say. Um, the last annual was certainly not 12 months ago. It couldn't have been. Um, so I read it in the wrong order. I can live. But now let's get to this. And this is of my top three of everything. Everyone, even if you're not even reading Superior Spider-Man, you probably know about Dan Slott getting death threats, etc., about doing the whole Spock thing, which is Spider-Man and Doc Ock, which is Otto Gunther Octavius in his brain. Stars, all the stars in the world, five, ten stars, whatever you want. It's, oh, by the way, it's thick. Oh my God, they're going to conclude it, but no. Black Widow number one. Did I buy it? Yes. Did I read it? Yes. Did I waste money on it? Yes, because it was in here. That's just uncool. It's just uncool. <laughs> anyway, it's not a double issue, even though I already paid for it, bagged it, took up space, etc. Um, but boy, once you get to the double splash page on this, it's 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 almost like disjustice, injustice, disrespect, in, in respect to to put a double issue to this number number thirty. Um, and, the, and for all those that were against Dan Slott, how awesome is it that we endured, if you will, the 29 issues and this happened. It even made it greater and more stupendous. So this is my favorite one of all of this, besides Bleeding Monk number zero. Um, puts on his old costume. How great is that? Uh, my turn. And Matt Fraction, whatever you're doing, dude, try writing. You know, try writing Hawkeye. Now it's all Annie Wu, David Aja, and now Chris Hollingsworth. I mean, hell, when I bought this one, I'm like, did, did they staple the wrong one on the cover? I mean, it's, there's, this has nothing. Winter Friends, obviously, like the Super Friends. They did another, like, DC crossover thing, but now it's all cartoony. It was almost like My Little Pony meets Hawkeye. And sorry to rant on the last two, but, um, and then this one, you know, I've been complaining about Matt Fraction spreading himself too thin with Image Comics, etc. Um, now he's bringing in so many other writers. Now he has three. I'm just done with the Kate Bishop in L.A. thing. I, psh, I'm not going to double up on TPBs anymore. I always get my Hawkeyes and, and uh, that's not happening. All right. So in conclusion, the next thing we're going to have, and I've been saving these up, we're going to do all five of these magic theroses, and we are going to do the trial of Jean Grey, one through six. I'll go through those for you, and I'll also do one through four. And you know what? There was a prize at the end of this, and it is in Thor number 20, and I don't know what that is, but I damn well remember reading it. And... It's on the fourth page, people. On the fourth page, page, there's this micro type of text. And hopefully it's not on the net. Don't even try to look on the net. Do it for real. I used about three different devices to try to figure out what he said. If you tell me what he said, I will send you this Day Tripper TPB. How cool is that prize? That's a pretty good prize, right? Day Tripper, but that's Fabio Moon and Gabriel Ba. I will send this to you if you can tell me what... King Thor said to Mjolnir, page four of Thor number 20. Sorry I don't have it. It's in my head. It's in my head. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Catch me next time. PK Comic Book 411.